What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. It's Kairos, and I'm here with another ohm analysis video. Just taking a very, I think, basic view of our favorite game that exists in all of DeFi. So with that said, I want to jump in and look at a little TA for the DGENs, a little fundamental analysis, and then a little uh, dream, daydreaming of what could be in a month, two months, six months. So let's do it. Looking at the chart, it's looking very promising. But if we want to get a better understanding of things, we need to, of course, draw some lines. But before we draw lines, I just want to throw a couple indicators up on this and use those perhaps instead of some lines. But I want to say though that anyone who is getting into technical analysis, your best bet is to just stick to basic support and resistance lines, basic trend lines. Um, you probably can avoid even taking it steps further, like drawing channels or wedges or ascending or descending triangles or head and shoulders or anything. Like really, that is, I think, um, helpful to indicate like changes in, um, you know, trajectory or pattern or whatever. But I think the best bet is just basic support and resistance lines. Just wanted to share that. But um, in terms of actual indicators, my favorite personally is the volume profile. Uh, what does it stand for again? VPVR? What is it? Volume profile, volume, blah, 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 blah. VPVR indicator. I always forget what it stands for. What is the VPR? Volume profile, profile, visible range. There it is. Jeez. Whatever. It doesn't matter if you know what it's called. It just matters if you know how it works. So we're going to throw that up there. And we'll make it a little bit easier to see. Um, so if you don't know what you're looking at, you're looking at, um, I guess it's a, I guess it's a proprietary indicator of trading view. So I don't know if I'm allowed to be using this in a video. So if I am cool, if I'm not, then I'll just delete the video. Um, but the big, uh, thing here on the right is a bunch of different price levels and how much volume there was at those price levels. So the bigger the spike at a given price level, the more volume occurred there. Uh, buying and selling volume specifically. Um, I mean, I guess I don't know what other volume there would be. I guess my point is, is if you don't know what I mean by volume, it just simply means the number of buying and selling that took place at that price level. So at 482, that is the most popular um, price level, the most crowded price level. And then below that would, I guess, be like 462, maybe like above that would be 570, and then below that would be like 409. So really, if we draw a box here from this to that would be like the vast majority of action for ohm in its entirety. And then the big black line going down the middle is called the point of control. And that is the area where the most volume occurred. So 482 is really like a middle area for which price perhaps would regress to, whether it's positive regression or negative regression, it's still mean regression. And so it perhaps functions as a magnet. It's not guaranteed to go back to that 
level, but it's probable that it will. And so right now you can see that price is below it and it's moving in a nice uh, trend. If you draw that line there, kind of up to the point of control. And if we're gonna play it with like the bottom of the wicks, then we would look at it like that. But if we would look at it from like the bottom of the candles, then maybe like that. The point is, is it is in an upward trajectory moving up towards the point of control. And if it continues on this path, then it will hit the point of control in early to mid September. But lately, the angle that it's moving is actually steeper. So if we drew it like that, um, something like this, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then September 2nd. So if we call it in the middle, then we can say that maybe September 5th is when we're looking perhaps at it challenging that resistance level, the point of control. And if it moves there sooner, then it's probably gonna, um, when it corrects, corrects more aggressively, more violently on the downside, right? When price pumps hard, then it's gonna drop hard. And when price pumps smoothly, I don't know if that makes sense, pumping smoothly. When it goes up on a smooth path, then its corrections are probably going to be less violent. Um, it's not a guarantee. It's just, you know, what goes up must come down. And uh, the faster it goes up, the faster it goes down. So at any rate, um, if we consider that the point of control for the all-time of ohm is 483, then that may be our um, you know, real price level we're looking at for the near term. Uh, we can also get further confirmation of where a key resistance level is by zooming in with things and removing some previous price data. So if we go all the way in and start from like at the bottom following the massive drawdown from one from 1400 down to 160 then it's going to reset the point of control and all the VPVR data and as you can see the point of control remains the same so that's nice to know that whether you're considering just this price or all the price 482 43 is a key price level um, and we can just keep zooming in a little bit and seeing what happens. 483, 483, 459, 286, okay. So it seems as if the local floor could be something like 286. And we can draw this line here just as a reminder because it changes when we zoom in and zoom out. And we can call that line a support line. And if we zoom back out, we see 489. So there's this range here. And if we think, okay, that the support is 286, the resistance is 483, um, what do we have in terms of upside from where we are currently? Um, so we still have 34% upside just on raw price for Ohm. And if you assume that Ohm will just follow this path and reach that 34% gain in the next two weeks, then that's 34% raw price gain plus, um, two weeks worth of rebases. Um, so if we just call it like three weeks, or three weeks, 15 days, if the five day rebase rate is what, 
6.5% or so, and that's 6, 12, 18, 19.5% increase of raw ohm through rebases, plus the price appreciating by 34%. So you do the math. Things are looking good in this trend here, just simply based on these metrics. So if we get rid of all this stuff, Let's get rid of this trend line and this horizontal line, and we'll throw the Ichimoku cloud up. So the Ichimoku cloud is another one of my favorite uh, indicators, and it just does a lot. Um, you know, it shows you trend reversal, it shows you support and resistance, it shows you um, like recent volatility. Um, I'm not going to get into like the nuts and bolts of the Ichimoku. Uh, indicator right now but I will tell you what it's showing me um, so this cloud takes a bit of time to form and on the daily it has just started forming back in um, uh, what like how many week was it 30 so 30 days ago uh, so July 20th it began forming um, it's a leading indicator the cloud um, or I guess it might be lagging I don't know bottom line is it gives you a nice visual for not only like support and resistance but how potentially big of a move it could make um, because what typically happens in the situation that ohm is in right now I guess I should have left that trend lined up is that ohm is going up towards that uh, cloud. Um, and actually, I want to draw the point of control as well, just to keep that up there. So I'm going to put a horizontal line at the point of control, and then we'll make it red because it's resistance, and then we'll get VPVR away. So you can see that the point of control of 482 is right around the bottom of the cloud of 461. Uh, but one thing that's good about the cloud is since it is uh, leading, it's offset by 30 uh, candles, then you can see you know, a bit more of a resistance or support range. And so what I like to say with this is that support, or rather resistance begins down here because the cloud kind of goes up and then it starts going down. So we're gonna call resistance from here to the, um, to the bottom of the cloud there. But then we can also move it up perhaps and say the point of control as well. And so if we get rid of the Ichimoku cloud, we can see this resistance area where the bottom of it begins where the cloud starts forming um, in an you know offset you know uh, thirty days into the future, and then the resistance zone ends at the point of control, which is also like a peak here of the bottom of the cloud. So that I think is a good resistance zone. Um, and it's important to draw resistance zones and support zones because you don't want to like be so precise that you're looking at one exact price as support or one exact price as resistance. Um, I like to use zones. And so this is kind of the situation right now is we could perhaps see price run up here to like 390 um, in the next like, you know, week and maybe it gets rejected at 390 and then does a correction. Um, if it were to correct, um, you know, a 50% retrace on the FIBS would be down to 306. Um, so, you know, maybe if you're like waiting to get in, um, I mean, just buy it now because rebases, man. <laughs> But if you're hoping for a dip after this nice run-up we've had uh, over the last you know, week plus, 
then maybe your price target could be somewhere between 300 and 330, you know. Um, but let's say that it breaks through the bottom of this resistance zone, continues to run up, um, and gets rejected, and dips after it hits the uh, top of this zone, which again is the the higher peak of the bottom of the cloud and the VPVR point of control. And so if it ran up from here to there, then a 50% retrace would be at 352, which is basically the current price. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. I'm not even thinking about things up here. And to be honest with you, if they get through the point of control, if we can get through the point of control, um, that's huge because you're moving above what is in fact the most popular crowded price area in all of Ohm's existence, that red line. And you can see ever since mid-May, price has not really spent a lot of time above there at all. Like this candle, one, two, three, four candles, and then five, six, seven, eight. Well, I can just do this. What am I doing? Uh, 16. So 21. Yeah. So there's only been um, in the last 101 days, um, 20. So only 20% of the time in the last 100 days has Ohm spent any time above that point of control. So we're like entering an, a, a situation here where we're absolutely going to be running into some major resistance. Um, and if it breaks through, I would say the bottom of this box, then I'm really, really paying attention. Um, you know, I'm not getting worried or anything. I'm just saying like, that is really bullish if it can get into this resistance box and then we look we look for what it does to uh, respond when it gets to the point of control and and if it gets in if we throw that ichimoku cloud back up there then it's likely um, well it's not likely but it's 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 possible for it to do an edge to edge cloud move like what is a a common behavior when price gets into a, a cloud, to a thick cloud especially, is an edge-to-edge -edge cloud move. And so um, if we just continued with this trajectory here, then we could look at maybe an edge-to-edge -edge cloud move where it gets up there in um, like mid to late September um, to 778. And if we throw the VPVR back up, we can also see that the, um, okay, I can't remember what these lines are called up here, um, but basically what these lines are is like this black line, let me get rid of this Ichimoku cloud. So this black line here, this little thin one, um, I gotta get all of them back. In this zone here, from that line to that line, is where 70% of the volume has taken place. So above this line, so above this line, only 15% of volume has happened. And below this line, only 15% of volume has happened. So this, if you like imagine the bell curve, 70% of data, of the data, has happened between um, 2.24 and 6.27. So this is another resistance area, and it's just interesting that it is in line with that tip of the line there, and then it peaks out. <laughs> it's interesting how the late July pump peaked out at that area. And then this candle, I always notice this, that this candle dipped and just like wicked up like crazy off of that area. Um, and then the early candles were kind of like oscillating around 
that 630 mark. So I kind of like 630 as a nice resistance area. So we'll get rid of VPVR again, and we'll throw Ichimoku back up. And we can see that the Ichimoku cloud, though it does kind of flatline up there at 826, it then just drops hard. And so um, I'm interested to see what the cloud does in the next like couple weeks. But we could say then perhaps, um, and then there's that like little lip there. So we could say that there's like a resistance area from like this lip to um, that line at 630. So we'll get rid of the Ichimoku cloud again. And we've got this resistance area here. And so we'll go ahead and draw that line like that. Okay. And then we can get rid of this line. And now we're looking at a nice clean um, plan. You know, that we're seeing a clear trend line. And then we have two major resistance areas. Um, and if we want to be safe, I guess we could also draw a support area just so that we want to have it at the front of our minds. So obviously we want to start at the bottom there because it represents a major support area of where most of the price action has occurred. Most of the volume has occurred, which so that's 224. And then where could we have it? Um, maybe like these candles are kind of like bouncing off of, kind of playing around a bit up here at like 280. So we'll call it 280. And then we'll draw this over here. And then we'll change this to green for support. All right, and we'll get rid of the VPVR. So there you go. So there's Ohm in terms of um, the situation right now, that you have this major support zone here uh, 225 up to 280 something and then the major resistance area coming up perhaps price bounces off of the 380 something and then drops back down to 290 something or maybe just fibs down like we said earlier to like 305 to 330 or whatever but then it climbs back up and um, hopefully breaks through this key box. And if it does, then I think it could shoot up to this resistance zone up here in the mid 600s. Um, so that's what I'm looking at right now in terms of TA. Uh, make with this what you will, not financial advice for you to do anything other than um, consider it. Uh, this video is getting kind of long, uh, so I want to uh, wrap it up here, uh, but I'll make a follow-up video immediately after this to look at some fundamentals uh, in a part two.